1 Kings chapter 19, and we're going to read a few verses to get us started today, and um, I'm going to use a title, a message title I used a long time ago, uh, The Great Prophet and His Great Depression. <laughs> the Great Prophet and His Great Depression. Verse 1, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also, how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life, and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. And left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then, as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in, in the strength of the food Forty days and forty nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then he said, God said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. And you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Mahola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. And it shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal. And every mouth that has not kissed him. We'll stop there. And uh, we want to focus in on this story of Elijah that takes place right after the showdown on Mount Carmel. One of the earliest Bible stories that I actually remember at the Christian school I went to uh, was the first Super Bowl Sunday. That's what our Bible teacher told us. And he told the story of the great showdown on Mount Carmel between um, Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And of course, God prevailed in that uh, demonstration of God's goodness and power. It also exposed the prophets of Baal and, 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 and Baal as a false God. So a great event takes place. And Elijah secures and sees a great victory. But right after that great victory, 
Watch what happens to Elijah. Notice his misery. Number one, there was a fall. He fell into the depths of depression. He went from being victorious to running for his life and hiding, thinking his ministry and his life uh, were over. He went from the highest high to the lowest low. And here's what we learn about uh, depression. Here's what we learn about uh, frustration in ministry and church and really in all walks of life. Many times those times of hardship come to us after times of victory. And I don't think it's by accident. I think one of the greatest tests we will ever face as believers or in, in other walks of life as well is the success test. How do we handle success? When we are, are in a rough spot, when we are facing things that are difficult, many times we'll turn to God. And, and it reminds us that we are not self-sufficient. You know, one, one thing that uh, COVID-19 has reminded us, as I said last week, uh, we're not in control. And he has pretty much just brought the whole world <laughs> to, to realize that. And um, I'm hoping and I'm praying as a result of that reminder that more people will reflect and turn to God and, and worship God. I, I've stopped praying, Lord, get us back to normal because I've come to realize maybe normal wasn't as good as we thought. And, and maybe normal Christianity and normal church activity and normal discipleship and normal event, maybe that wasn't enough. What I'm hoping for is a new normal. Something that may be better when we ha have suffered through not being able to meet. May we take more seriously the, the freedom we have to meet together and come together uh, to worship. May we be reminded that we need God's help each and every day and do something about it. It's in those times we're reminded of that. Right after 9-11, you remember how the country came together and churches were filling up again after that horrendous attack on our on our country but it didn't take long did it to go right back to how it was before um, it ever happened when we're in times of prosperity sometimes we're, we're tempted to fall and I don't necessarily I'm, I, I'm not trying to say that's what happened to Elijah but I think it can happen to us sometimes we just get prideful sometimes we think that it's possible to rise above all of the troubles of this life but it's that's not the case. And here's God's great prophet who had been obedient to what God had called him to do. And we turn one page over to chapter 19. And we, 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 we find that success doesn't last very long. And sometimes it's right after a great victory that we face our uh, toughest battles mentally or emotionally or, or even spiritually. We, we talked a few weeks ago about David. When David fell into his sin with Bathsheba, he was at the height of his political life and power. He was, uh, commentators agree, in his 50s probably. I mean, think about that. This is somebody that knew better. Somebody God had used to do great things. But sometimes when we're at the top, um, the fall is that much uh, farther and harder. So we, we see in his misery his fall. Number two, I want you to see his fear. And this is interesting in verse 3. After the messenger from Jezebel came and um, administered her threat, the Bible says and when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. This doesn't even sound like the same person. This is the fearless Elijah. This is the one who alone on Mount Carmel stood up to the prophets of Baal. And now he is facing fear. The Bible says he's running for his life. And isn't it interesting that one that would never taste death, you remember that? Elijah never died, is running for his life. Here's how that happens. Fear hides truth. Fear leads to irrational thinking and irrational actions. See, I, I'm still learning in the area of leadership. Uh, I don't know if you ever graduated.
graduate from that, but as a pastor, I've learned this. Never make decisions based on fear. Never make a decision motivated by fear. Uh, I think God can use fear. Of course, we are to fear the Lord and give him reverence and respect. But I don't think in over 20 years of ministry, God has ever led me to a decision based on fear. You don't make decisions as a church because you're fearful of somebody's response or their reaction. You don't make decisions based on fear of not being able to afford something God's clearly told you to do. You don't make decisions based on that. You make decisions based on, on faith, and you make decisions based on the character, knowledge, and provision, and power of God. That's what guides our decisions. A preacher around here, uh, Cheryl Adamson, said something I love this statement. She says, if it's God's will, it's God's deal. <laughs> I like that. If it's God's will, it's God's deal. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't lay in the bed worrying about the, the dead on that building. I, I think that's God's will for our church. If it's God's will, it's his deal. He'll, he'll, he'll provide for it. Now, here's the bad news for that. He's going to use y'all to do it. <laughs> He's going to use me to do it. He's going to use our whole church to do it. But he'll, he'll give to us, and then we give back to him, and we'll, we'll get that paid off if it's, his, if it's his will. Here's something else I don't want to do. I don't want to look at that and say, well, you know what? Now we got that. Boy, we better, we better cut spending on missions. We better cut spending on evangelism. We better cut children's ministries and youth ministries. That is cutting off your nose to spite your face. I don't know about you. I want to move down there to reach more people. Amen. Amen. If we reach more people, guess what? going to take more money. <laughs> it's going to take more money. Where's that money going to come from? Where every other red cent we have comes from. God, the giver of all things good. He brings us to it. He's going to lead us through it. If it's his will, it's his, it's his deal. Fear leads to irrational thinking. Um, God wasn't finished with Elijah. But now he is running for his life. Did you notice what God asked him? We'll, we'll get to this more in a minute. He says, Elijah, why are you here? He asked him twice. Why are you here? And Elijah answered like, I'm going to tell you why I'm here. And this is a good reason. I don't think his reason satisfied God. Elijah wasn't where he was supposed to be. He was where he was because of fear. He was where he was because of fear. And God's like, why, why are you here? Well, God, don't you know Jezebel's going to kill me? And, and you know, I, I had to get here and hide, God, because you're just not God enough to protect me. You say, well, I didn't read that, but that's what he did. I don't see anywhere in here where he received a threat from Jezebel and then said, God, where would you have me to go? And I'm not trying to hate on Elijah. Man, I, I'm nowhere near uh, a man of God like Elijah was, but you see what fear does? Notice number three, his feeling. His feeling uh, in verse 10. So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant and torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. You hear what, here's what's happening. Elijah said, I, I feel like this ain't right. This isn't right. God, I did exactly what you said. Everybody else in Israel, they turned their back on you. They've forsaken the covenant. They've done all this. I alone am left. I'm the only, I, I'm the only good one, God. And I feel like I've been wronged in all this. You ever told God that? You ever gone to the just God of the universe and said, God, this ain't fair. This is not fair. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like this isn't going right. One of my favorite preachers years ago with the Lord now, his name is Sam Cathy. Sam Cathy said something I try to remind myself of constantly, and I've shared it with you several times. The Christian does not do what we do based on how we feel. We are to do what we do based on what we know. We can't let feelings get involved with this. Well, I feel like I need, you know, this, this needs to be easier. I'm, I'm trying to do what's, what's right. We cannot trust our feelings. Hey, let's be honest. How many times does your feelings change? Right? And sometimes, a lot of times, our feelings change once we 
like we, but like we saw the, the last two weeks, we gaze into the Word of God and we spend time with, with Him. Um, Elijah is about to have an attitude adjustment. He really is. In a very patient and loving way, and we'll get to that in a minute. But right now, he's reacting on fear, and he's responding based on his feeling. He makes another mistake. Notice verse 4. It says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die. Now, what if God would have answered that prayer? Aren't you thankful? <laughs> God hadn't answered all the foolish prayers we pray. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm so glad I can be so ignorant. I've told you this before, too. I'll have a problem and an issue. I don't just go to God with the problem. I go to God with a plan. God, here's my problem, and here's what you need to do to work this out. God, I'm going to help you out. I know you're busy, and I know a lot of people are calling on you, so here's what you need to do. All you need to do is, is bless my plan. Right? And you know what I fear? Sometimes God has done just that. And in so doing, I've missed his will. I've missed his plan. Well, sometimes, you know, his plan's a lot better than our plan. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot better. And, and, you know, we don't know exactly why Elijah's praying this. It might have been that Elijah was so fearful of Jezebel that he said, you know what, God, I'd rather you just kill me in my sleep. You know what I mean? Yeah, Lord, give me a lethal injection or something so I don't have to face the torturous death of, of Jezebel. Because who knows what she had, had planned. But that was, that was a, a foolish prayer. Why? Because life and death is God's decision. The power of our life and our death is, is, in, is in God's hand. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed unto a man once to die. We all have an appointment with death. The preacher I was talking to yesterday reminded me, you know, one out of one people die. <laughs> <laughs> now, Elijah is the exception to the rule. What if God would have answered his prayer? And by the way, God didn't need Elijah to do his will. He could have selected somebody else. You know what God reminds me of constantly? God doesn't need me in that pool. He could bring somebody else in there. Uh, God, God, doesn't, God doesn't need Jamie. I'm thankful that he uses Jamie. He don't need any of us. And I'm, I'm thankful, and I know Elijah was thankful, that God did not answer this foolish prayer to take his life. All right, so first we see the misery of the prophet. But now let's see the ministry of the Lord. Let's see how God responds to Elijah. All right, notice, first of all, Elijah was given sleep. Look at verse 5. Then, uh, this is after his prayer that God would, would just take his life. Verse 5. Then, as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. What Elijah needed, more so than any other physical thing during this time, was rest. I heard Johnny Hunt say years ago, he said, I have found that many of the times I was tempted to quit ministry, resign my church, and throw in the title, uh, my, uh, throw in the towel. He said, all I really needed was a nap. You know, sometimes we get so busy with religious activity or good activity and good deeds, we drain ourselves physically and we become weak. And when we become weak physically, it impacts our lives spiritually sometimes. We, we can't study. We, we can't pray. Uh, that's, that's, why, that's why sometimes the psalmist leads us beside the still waters. It's there he restores our soul for the journey. Now listen, I, I believe in, in, in hard work and we, we need to be busy for the Lord. But, but we can't run ourselves down physically. We need to take care of ourselves. Because it's... It's, it's important for us. See, we're, we're spiritual beings, but we're also physical beings. And we're emotional beings. Elijah needed some rest. He had just uh, accomplished a great victory there on, on Mount Carmel. Then he had journeyed a long way. You add the stress and the fear for his life. That's exhausting. He needed some rest. Uh, 
I, I, there have been times when I've gotten up in this pulpit without proper rest. Then there have been times when I've had adequate rest. And uh, there's a big difference. If, if God wants to use us, we have to take care of us. We have, we have to get rest. Number two, God sent angelic aid. The Bible says suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, rise and eat. Isn't it wonderful that God is so loving and so patient with us that even when we're running for our lives, we've lost our faith, and we're out of his will, we're out of our place, and we're kind of whining about him not doing it to us as we deserve, that he lovingly comes to us. He, he sends angelic aid. Here's what's, here's what's important about that. You say, well, I've been weak before and God's never sent an angel um, to me. Um, heavenly assistance can come in a variety of ways. Just because you haven't been literally touched by an angel <laughs> doesn't mean you haven't been touched with a heavenly visitation. Maybe just through his spirit that dwells within you. Just a little, a little touch, a little quickening of the spirit. God sends him heavenly assistance. Number three, he sends him strength for the journey. The angel said, arise and eat. Verse six says, then he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank. You know what he did? He laid down again. More rest. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, now arise and eat. Why? Because the journey is too great for you. Not only did he send him a, a heavenly person, he sent him heavenly provision. Don't you know that was some good cake? <laughs> I bet that water was the greatest water Elijah had ever had. Why? Because it came from heaven. God has sent us the bread from heaven in the person of his son and our Savior Jesus Christ. But, but Elijah needed the strength for the journey. And I love what the angel reminded him of. He said, you're going to go on a journey, but get this. The journey's too great for you. In the same sentence, here's what the angel is saying. You're about to do something that you can't do alone. Sometimes I'll ask people to do something in the, in the, in the church. And a lot of times I, I get this, this answer. I, I, don't, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I'm qualified. You know what that, that tells me? That tells me, number one, that's a person God can use because they're humble. But God doesn't want us to sit in our humbleness for long. He wants us to be reminded, you're absolutely right. The task is too great for you. That's why God's going to help you. Every Sunday I climb in that pulpit, that task is too great for me. Pastor in your church, the task is too great for me. God reminded Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. How much strength and ability you have is not important. It, it's what the will of God is for your life. And if it's God's will for your life, his grace is sufficient. You say, but I'm weak. Well, that's when his power kicks in. We just have to get to that point of weakness. Use all of our strength up so his strength can kick in. So then God does something great um, for Elijah. He allows him to see his power. Elijah's running from a mean old woman named Jezebel. He's scared to death of this woman. And God says, here's who you need to fear. Look, look what he did in verse 11. God said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. All right. The word of God wasn't there. This is a demonstration of his power. But I tell you this. Here, here's one thing God was saying without saying it. Jezebel can't do this. Jezebel can't do this. Ahab can't. Yes, you can. God's too many. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And then after the wind, the Bible says there was an earthquake. How many of you have ever been in an earthquake? Have you ever felt an earthquake? I haven't. I hear you have. I hear it can be, be a very unsettling experience. It can. 
when the literal ground is, is shaking beneath your, your feet. But the Bible says that, that the Lord was not uh, in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. All right? So, but here, here's what God's reminding him of. I'm God. You're not. And Jezebel certainly is not. Why are you afraid of this woman when I'm the God of the universe? Not only that, he reminds Elijah of his purpose. All right, after the fire, there was a still small voice. And so it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. After all of that destruction, after all of that power, comes a still small voice. And here's what God said. What are you doing here, Elijah? Second time God's asked him that. Of course, Elijah gives him that, that spiel. But here's what, here's what God says, verse 15. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. He reminded him, You still have a purpose. Now, why are you here? When you're supposed to be there. Right? Why are you here when you're supposed to be there? And then finally God speaks to him in this still, small voice. And here's what he did. He does, he does three things for him. After this long spill from Elijah. I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Now watch how God responds to his concerns. Number one, he says, I've got something for you to do. He says, go your way uh, to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over uh, Syria. Here's what God says. I still have something for you to do. I'm not finished with you. Um, it, you almost skip over, but in verse 3, the Bible says Elijah left his servant in Beersheba, and he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and there he prayed that God would take his life. Here's what God, or here's what Elijah was saying to God. You're finished with me. It, it's, it's very clear. I've done what you wanted me to do. Um, I, I, on, on Mount Carmel, I did what you called me to do. I, I told Ahab this. Clearly, you're done with me. You ever felt like God was done with you? You ever felt like the third strike, you're out? You ever felt like God's patience had run out and that clearly he was finished with you? How encouraging it must have been for Elijah to hear from God, I've got something for you to do. We don't have any Elijahs in here, including myself. But if you still have breath in your lungs, Here's what God's saying to all of us today. I've got something for you to do. There's somebody you can reach. There's somebody you can pray for. There's something you can do. This addressed his thoughts of failure. Then number two, in the still small voice, God reminded Elijah that justice will be done. Justice will be done. Uh, verse 17, it shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Sometimes it appears the enemies of God are winning, but God still has a plan. Justice will be done. God is a God of justice. There may be some wrongs we never see made right in our lifetime, but I do know this, one day, Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. There will be a separation of the sheep and the goats and the wheat and the tares. And one day God will set every wrong right. What an encouragement. What an encouragement to Elijah to hear God say to him, um, I'm not done here. I'm, 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 I'm still God. Justice will be done. And then lastly, he uh, addressed Elijah's loneliness. How good this must have, have hurt. Compare this to what Elijah says in 14. The last line of verse 14. He said, I alone am left. And they seek to take my life. 
You ever felt like you were all alone? I'm all alone. You remember when Moses, this is one of my favorite lines of, of Moses. Moses basically goes to God and says, why would you send me out here with these people? <laughs> why why would you do this to me? I'm all alone out here. Elijah thought he was all by himself. And listen to what God uh, tells him. He says, I have reserved 7,000 in Israel. All whose knees have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. Elijah, you're nowhere near alone. There's at least 7,001. Because <laughs> I've got 7,000 reserved plus you. I'm not done. You are not alone. Um, the only reason Elijah felt lonely is because why? He was hiding in a cave. Well, sure, if you go a day's journey into the wilderness all by yourself, guess what? You're going to be all by yourself. You know what? I have to, I have to watch myself um, some, sometimes because I will retreat. And I will disengage and not seek friendly counsel or a lunch, maybe a lunch with a fellow pastor or, or something. We, ministers, church leaders, everybody. You need friendship. You need companionship. When you feel like you're all alone, that, that's what the devil wants you to feel. He wants you to feel outnumbered. He wants you to feel overpowered. He wants you to feel like a failure. And Elijah, unfortunately, had bought into all that. There's a contemporary song out, kind of old now, but it said, fear is a liar. It is a liar. And, and Elijah stated all of those things based on fear and on failure and on, on friendlessness. And then God comes along and says, now let me tell you the truth. The truth is I'm still on the throne. The truth is um, I'm not finished with you. The truth is justice will be done. And the truth is you're not alone. God, God has and always will have a good we need to seek his face. We need to rest in his power and his plan. We need to be a friend to others. You know, not allow ourselves to be lonely. Let's get out of the cave. Let's seek the power and presence of God like Elijah did. And Elijah did exactly what God told him to do. And I love reading about Elisha. And you know what Elisha asked for? He said... Double Give me double of what Elijah had. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, and and this, this is a, a good reminder that um, even, even the great ones have bad days. But God is patient and he is loving. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for Elijah. Lord, sometimes we read these accounts from Bible heroes and we think to ourselves, these are superheroes. I can't do what they did. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not able to accomplish all that they did. Sometimes, God, I'm just so thankful that you included in your word times of frustration and even failure in, in some cases. And here's your great prophet running for his life, feeling lonely, rejected, fatigued, doubting your will, doubting your presence. God, we see you come alongside. You went to where he was and you ministered to him. God, I pray you've ministered to us. We're all, we're all at different places in our journey. Some may be here today or will watch online later. And they'll be on the mountaintop right now. And others will be way down in the valley battling depression and fear and rejection. Lord, I'm thankful that, that you're the God of all, good times and bad. And Lord, I'm thankful that if we would merely stop long enough, that you will minister to our souls with heavenly provision and protection. And Father, I pray that for anybody that may be hurting, anybody that may be struggling, remind them, remind us all that you're God and you're on the throne. And you're a long way from being finished. In Jesus.
Jesus' name. Amen.